And then one day, this is what happened. Elijah, the man of God, said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to gather up every person who's kind of torn that believe Baal is God or God is God. And so he said, we're going to bring everybody together. And so Ahab, this was so sad. King Ahab at this time was so deceived that he said, there's no way the one you call God is God because Baal is God. And he didn't even think that until he invited an open door. He opened a door to let Jezebel come in. And when you open a door sometime, it will take away everything that you've learned in your past. Some of you good little Bible belters were, were raised in church. A lot of your friends were raised in church. And all of a sudden you open up a door one day and everything that came in from that door, you threw away everything that you learned. Is that making sense? And then you're like, man, you know, now I'm thinking with this other way and, and I'm not believing what I was taught when I was young. So what happened was they gathered Ahab, it said, sent through all the children of Israel and gathered them together on, on Mount Carmel. And it was an even fight. It was 850 versus one. All God needs is one. And are you the one? So they got 450. They got prophets of uh, Baal. And they got 400 prophets of Astronaut. And they got them all together. And there was 850 for one. And Elijah, the man of God, said, I'll tell you what. We'll bring two bulls. They brought two bulls up. They, they slaughtered them. They put them on the altar, put stones around them. And he said, I'll let y'all go first. So these guys started praying. These prophets of Baal, they started crying for fire from their God. They started crying for fire from their God. And Elijah, the, the man of God, he was like, okay, well, cry some more. He, he's probably in slumber. He's probably asleep. Keep crying some more. And so these 850 prophets just kept crying. And the Bible says they would cut their self. And this went on through the morning and the day and into the afternoon. And then the man of God said, all right, now it's time for God to show up. He said, now, now here's my bull over here, but we're going to make it even better. Build a trench around it and start pouring water on it. We're going to make this a fair fight, okay? We're going to pour water. So he kept pouring water. He said, go get some more water. Go, go pour, pour some more. They went back a second time. Third time, he said, get some more water. And then he called fire down, and the fire came and consumed it. Well, after the fire came, consumed it, the man of God said, get the prophets and destroy them. And they killed them. And then it, he went on to say, you know, now do you believe that, that God is God? And everybody said, oh, yeah, we believe. You know, isn't it sad that what this nation basically was called to be, they had to see a miraculous sign and a wonder. And they started serving God. Well, then Ahab went back and he told Jezebel what happened. And Jezebel said, send a word towards them that I'm going to destroy him, and I'm going to kill him. And so here's a man that just destroyed, through the power of God, 850 men, heard a word from this lady that I think the spirit of Jezebel came through, and he was scared. What does a Jezebel spirit mean? You want to get isolated? So what did he do? He ran off. He was manipulated by the spirit, and he became insecure. Dude killed physically 850 people through the power of God, and he's scared of one spirit and a lady and took off running. See, this is how backward things are a lot of times now. We wouldn't, a lot of guys wouldn't be scared of a lady, well, some ladies, but they might not be scared of a spirit because they open all these doors, but they would be terrified of 850 people coming at them. And it said that the man of God ran off, and then when he, he ran, he hid, and they started praying to the Lord, and he's like, Lord, you know, take my life. One time he even said, take my life. You know, I'm running. I'm scared. And the Lord spoke to him. And basically, this is what, what happened. This was the end result. The Lord told him, he said, I want you to go, and I want you to get three men, and I want you to anoint them, and I want them to carry out the things that I've called you to. Now, as I was reading this and I was studying this, there was two things that I thought about. One, one or two things could have happened. There's a time in your life when you have to pray over people to carry on the mantle, the anointing, and the calling that God had for you. You know, there's going to be one day that I'm not going to be the, the connection pastor anymore. In about 20 years, I'm probably going to quit. And, you know, I'm going to come up here one day, and I'm going to pray when y'all's kids are out here, and we're going, to, we're going to pray over a new 20s pastor, and, you know, I'm going to walk away from it. This could happen. That could have been what was going on, that the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to call three people, Elijah, and I want you to prophesy over them, put a mantle on them and just send them out or this is else what could have happened he ran and he got scared and said I don't want to do this anymore but the Lord has a calling 
how bad would it be for you to watch somebody do what God has called you to do? Now think about that. If the Lord has called you to do something and you're not going to do what you're called to do, and the Lord's going to anoint somebody else to do it. He was running. He was running from the things that the Lord had come to because he let this fear and this emotion set in. And then after that, he went and he had to pray for three more people. The Lord said, go find Elisha. So this is what happened. He went in the field and found Elisha. And dude was um, a plow boy. And he was sitting there doing the, I think he was making tomato plants or something. He was plowing. And, and Elijah, the man of God, called Elisha and he, and he talked to him. And he called him. And, he, and this is what Elisha, the man of God, did. He said he went, he talked to his parents, and he came back. Now, he was doing something right there. He said he tore up the plow, he killed the oxen, he, he, he lit them a fire. The, the Bible says he boiled them with water, and he gave them away. Do you know one thing that represents? When he said, I will follow you, God, and I will give my life to you 100%, I will do away with everything I have in the past. The way I had provision was these oxen and this plow and I destroyed my past because I will never look back. I will always run forward. And it said that he took off running forward. And you know, here's the thing that the Lord said to Elijah, don't get him confused, Elijah, he said, I want you to anoint three people. He didn't anoint three people. He anointed Elijah. And he went and anointed the other ones. And see, here's basically what it all comes down to. Is that when he did this, Elijah couldn't beat Jezebel as he was instructed to, so he anointed the three men. He anointed Ahazel, Elijah, and Jehu. And this is what he did. He anointed a king, a priest, and a prophet. Now, the king was over the earthly realm. Okay? Y'all got that? The priest was over the spirit realm, praying. And the prophet was over everything. Now, think about that time in world history. Think about today. Which one would be number one? Probably the king, then the priest, and the prophets, majority of people think are weird, right? But in those days, the prophet was the head of everything. The priest was second, and then the king was third. And so, basically what happened from this is he went and, and he, a pro, he prayed over these people. He prophesied to them, spoke life into them. And the thing is, a lot of times today, I even feel that it's kind of counterfeit that the way that things are in America. You don't think the spirit of Jezebel is coming through America? Who should be the, the number one people that we look to? It should be prophets. It should be people who get along with the Lord. I mean, imagine if they let Lou Ingalls run a lot of America. I mean, think about it. What would happen? Abortion would be done in America. Things would be different. Things would be changing. You know, but instead, sometimes they try to push men of God off to the side and they speak evil of them and stuff. But, and somebody can do corrupt things in America and in our government and they like maybe even pat them on the wrist or something and let them keep going man if a prophet or, or a minister or something just messes up this much they're ridiculed and kicked out it's completely the opposite of the way things should be you know you get men of God you should put, be able to have prophets that could walk in and prophesy over the nation and prophesy all over the, the leadership of America and then it goes on to say that they anointed Jehu, and they said, Jehu, you're going to go destroy Jezebel, which Elijah, the man of God, was supposed to do that, but he had to transfer this, this over. So here's what happened. I'm going to go through this chapter fast. Jehu was running after the things of the Lord, and here's what you have to realize. In the geographical location, i got a fake map, okay? Israel's up here, and through Israel you go down to, to Judah. All of these nations, slowly but surely, were coming in to, to Baal worship, and it just covered them. What the Lord had a plan was, you know if you go to the very top of Israel, what it is? Jezreel. You know who lived in Jezreel? Jezebel. And that's where the Lord started. And the Lord wanted to start at the top. And he said, Jehu, you're going to the top. And when you go to the top, you're going to destroy Jezebel. Every person in the household of Jezebel, if you read the word of God, they went down, and they started just destroying everything. Every person who was over a kingdom, every person who was a king, every person who was, some people were overseers of cities, everyone that was worshiping Baal, they destroyed them. Completely went through. And every time Jehu would go through, he wouldn't even ask questions. He would just destroy the people that the Lord put in his path to destroy. And the thing is, when he got to Jezebel, she kept, the Bible says she anointed herself, I mean, adorned herself with makeup and jewelry and all this stuff. She tried to look pretty. Men of God, listen to me. 
a true man of God can see straight through that. All right? You know, when God got ready to anoint kings, he, he said, don't look at the outward appearance. Look at their heart. You know, beauty's going to fade. You need to look at what's on the inside. And as Jehu kept running and, and he went through and destroyed people, Jezebel would send people out. Send people out and they would be destroyed. Get behind thee. Get behind thee. That's what you need to do. When you're running after your calling, things come at you, people come at you, you just need to tell them to get behind me. You know, a lot of people say, get behind me, Satan. Just get behind me. You don't have time to even talk to things. You don't have time to address problems. You just need to say, get behind me because I'm going somewhere. So when Jehu, when he actually got up to Jezebel and he looked up at her in the castle, up there in the castle with there was eunuchs. You know what eunuchs were? They were men who don't have their family jewels anymore, okay? PG-13. And it says they were castrated, okay? They had, had their manhood taken from them. There's a lot of people who had their manhood spiritually taken from them, stripped away from them because of what people have done to you. Because what's one thing that Jezebel deals with is insecurity. Men, have you ever noticed that whenever you're around a bunch of guys and you feel insecure because some old hottie is in the room, what do you do? You start taking jabs at each other. Just to let you know, girls think that looks ridiculous when you do that. Preach. But the thing is, you start belittling, belittling each other. Man, don't do that stuff. You're just being manipulated by a spirit. And it goes on to say that he looked up, and here's what could have happened. He could have went up there and defeated Jezebel itself. But he knew this, and this is for some people in here. The people that needed to defeat Jezebel was the people that she had ripped the life away from, reproducing away from. And you know, he could have dealt with that himself, but he didn't. It's the same way in your life. I've seen people come to the altar and say, my life's in disarray, my life is in turmoil. Can you pray for me? I say, I, say, I can pray for you, but you got to fight. You got to fight for what's yours. You got to fight for that calling in your life. You have to fight for everything that God's given you. I can do everything I can do, but until you get, to, get ready to say, I'm going to fight for what God has for me, you, whatever I do is just countless. I can pray. I've seen people come to the altar and I say, Come here, brother, what do you want to pray for? And we'd pray. Next week, hey, brother, what do you want to pray for? We pray. The third week, I just start praying. And they're like, Pastor Joe, are you a prophet? And I'm like, well, yeah, but you're praying for the same thing every single week because as soon as you leave church, you're not willing to fight. And, you know, I can't fight for you. I can pray and intercede and believe for you, but you're going to have to make the decision in your life. I'm going to do something with my life. I remember when I stood up one time in, in the Spirit, and I went to an altar, and I said, God, I'm going to 100% completely sell out to the things of the Lord because I want everything that you have for me. And all the men of God in the church can pray for me, but God, I want to do it. And I'm going to fight, and I'm going to seek counsel, and I'm going to seek your face. And some of you men in here, you need to stand up in the spirit and become a man. Girls, you need to stand up and say, you know, I'm not what guys say I am. I may not be what my mother or my father said. I'm a child of the Most High God. He loves me and has a purpose and a plan for me. And when you realize that, you're going to stand up straight. You're going to hold your head up high. You're going to look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, every devil in hell is going to be scared of this today. And you're going to walk out there because you're going to know that you're going to do something with your life. You know, when you're full of God and you're full of the power of God and people start speaking negative things over you, who cares about their opinion? They don't matter what God thinks about you, what your leadership thinks about you, if you marry what your spouse thinks about you, who cares what anybody else thinks about you? You shouldn't let any of that stuff bother you because if you do, you're not going to do anything in this life. I promise you that. You know, I was looking at YouTube one day, some, some, some preachers I like and some worship bands that I like, and these same people will get on, on their pages and just bash everything that they're doing. And I thought, how sad that somebody would spend their time bashing and I promise you this the majority of people that bash the worship bands are probably worship leaders who backslid the preachers who are bashing I mean how are you going to bash T.D. Jakes and Damon Thompson please first of all I'd be scared to bash either one of them you know and the thing is they may be saying bad things about them but they're probably somebody who was called to be a minister that walked away from the calling of God on their life because they gave in to the spirit of Jezebel